know. We're just gonna stand here. <laughs> we have to do it that way, darn it. You are on. Awesome. Hi, welcome. everybody. Um, welcome to PRS Crisis Link and our uh, Call Text Live campaign. Um, we're here tonight to give you an inside look at our crisis center, how things work, and to take your questions. And we've been taking questions all week, so we look forward to answering them. I'm Laura, I'm the director here at Crisis Link, and. Hi, I'm Michael Cosart. I'm the hotline supervisor, uh, one of the supervisors for the hotline and uh, text line. Let me see if I can do Crisis Link. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, as we give you our tour and answer questions, feel free to add more if you are visiting with us. And if you're seeing this on another day, feel free to also leave questions that we can answer. I think we're going to re release it next week as well. So, um, this is our center back here. We have uh, several stations answering hotline and text line, and we have volunteers and paid staff that are here. Um, we have these stations over here, and then to our left, we answer our caring calls, which are our calls made to homebound um, seniors, but we had to evict these folks tonight while we are filming because it would be too loud, but that's where they are staffed. Um, our supervisors are over here in these offices, so if you're thinking about volunteering, we do have support for you. Now we're going to take you down our hallway to see our debriefing room, the best place. Like yelling. Hi! Um, this is where we debrief tough calls, where people who um, need a safe space to talk about what they experienced or just to get a break from the phone or text line, come in here, sit, have a chat, do some self-care, color, mindfulness activities, those kinds of things. Um, so that when you leave Crisis Link, you can leave it here and get a fresh start before you leave and go back to your normal non-Crisis Link life. So we're pretty happy to have that and we encourage you when we have our information sessions coming to check it out. Hi, again. <laughs> um, so we have a couple questions that have already been submitted. <laughs> We have, uh, we're trying to set this up. Sorry, guys. It's our first time doing Facebook Live. We're so glad you joined us. Um, so we wanted to start with our, our normal questions that we get asked everywhere that we go. In every briefing I've ever done, every volunteer, prospective volunteer has asked. And that question is, how long is a typical call? Yeah, our calls uh, do range in times. Um, but uh, an average call length for non-suicide is about 10 minutes or so. And uh, for calls that do involve suicide, they range probably about 20, 22 minutes or so. Um, so it's about twice as long, but it really does range from call to call. Some of them can be just a few minutes, um, and others can go as much as to an, even an hour. Um, so it really depends on what the needs of the caller are. What do you think is the longest call that you've had? Longest one I've had has definitely been over an hour and a half. Um, just being concerned about the person and. Um, it happens a lot more when we're newer to the lines, um, but it does happen that callers just need more time and we uh, devote as much time as we need to everyone. Absolutely. It's so important that we meet people where they're at and not just by a standard. And I think that's something that's really important about call centers, crisis centers, and why they're so important is we are flexible in meeting people's needs for that moment where we don't have services that are scheduled like a therapy session or a group session we're able to be in the moment with the person and meet them and their needs in that moment. So the next question that we always get asked is, what do people call us about? Because we're a suicide prevention line, but so many people call about so many other things. So what would you say the majority of folks are connecting with us about? You no, know, um, you know, while we do mainly deal with suicide, it's not the main thing we talk, we talk about. Um, a lot of people call who are feeling stressed, uh, overwhelmed, anxious, um, depression is a really big one, um, and a lot of it's uh, relationships with our people. They really struggle with um, knowing you know, how to deal with a really difficult situation with a family member or a friend. Um, sometimes they might be even concerned about a friend who's suicidal or a family member who might be suicidal. So they're reaching out to us trying to figure out what they can do and what ways we can help and we try to help them through that crisis. Absolutely. Um, one of our or statistics that goes around is that one in all four calls are suicide related. So um, usually we take about five calls an hour per person and you can expect in every hour to have at least one suicide call. 
And when we say suicide call, that can mean various things. It can mean somebody who's, um, you know, in the moment uh, really, really struggling or somebody who's struggled very recently or it's a person that's concerned about somebody else. So it could be one of those three things. Um, but we've definitely seen a pretty considerable increase over the past couple of years with suicide related calls. Um, it used to be a little bit, or quite a bit less, we would say more like 15% of our volume was suicide related. So we're definitely seeing an increase um, with more uh, attention on suicide prevention and the resources available. So that's another really important question <clears throat> that comes up a lot is, um, if somebody calls about someone else, like not themselves, they're reaching out about a family member or a friend, what do we offer if we're not working with that person directly? Well, all of our uh, crisis workers are really well trained. So they, we give them really in-depth training, um, but sometimes that can be kind of hard to communicate to someone who doesn't have that training. Um, and really, people are looking for very straightforward, step-by-step -step instructions. Um, so we actually do have um, some instructions uh, along with a number of other resources that we have, uh, we do have uh, a, some guidelines on what to do to, and how to talk to someone who is suicidal. Um, and basically they're kind of tips that are based off of what um, we talk to everyone in training that we train for all of our crisis workers. Um, some of the main things, you know, mostly it's a lot about listening um, and being available for the person. Um, not judging them for how they're feeling and um, making sure that, they, that both the caller who's work concerned for their friend and the suicidal individual know that there are a lot of resources available to them that includes us as well as other people in the community. When one person's in crisis, most often their entire um, support system can be in crisis because it's really scary when somebody's thinking about ending their life, but we make sure that you know the person at risk is cared for as well as the person supporting. So we, we wanna make sure that, especially when we have opportunities to share with y'all what we do, that it's not just for the person that's at risk, it's also for everyone else who's going through that crisis as well. Um, and we give you tangible um, options and services that we can provide. Um, in addition to kind of coaching for how to interact with the person at risk, um, we also sometimes offer an outbound phone call to the person that you're worried about, to check in on them, see if they wanna talk. Um, and we can even do a risk assessment with you if you know the person really well, like if it's your spouse or your child, we can walk through a risk assessment and give you an idea of how concerned you might need to be about that person and at what level you should intervene with other resources such as um, emergency mental health or walk-in service or something like an emergency department. So we do a lot of different things in that situation. I think it's so important that we have folks like Mike on the phone who are able to offer that support. Um, the other question that we often get is uh, how many calls a day do you get? How busy is it? How many calls do you personally take during a shift? So from your experience, what's that like? Um, you know, I, my experience has been long lived, so it keeps changing. <laughs> but, um, you know, we can average, some shifts can be kind of quieter, so a three hour shift is what we normally have for our crisis workers. Um, and in that, um, three hours, it could be, you know, eight, it could be up to 15. Um, you know, we talk about normally getting about five hours or five calls an hour, um, but we have normally a number of people here, so it sort of varies. Um, and again, it depends on how long the calls are. So if the calls are a lot longer, um, we may get a little bit less, but it's gonna be more intense, so. Absolutely, and I think what's important to highlight too is the in sharp increases in our call volume, and Volume means any number of calls coming in from any uh, line into our center, and we do answer more than one line. Um, back in 2014, we would probably see about 80 to 90 calls per day, and at this point, we're averaging closer, somewhere around 140 to 150 calls hitting or hitting our center a day, which is a really um, important statistic because one, it's awesome, more people know it's there, more people are reaching out, more people are getting helped. But we also want to take this opportunity to share more about how we work and how we operate and what we need this month from our own community to continue this important work. So the other question that we always get everywhere we go is, are you the lifeline or are you PRS crisis link? Like, and what's the difference between the two? Um, we're both. So we are a crisis center. It's part of a network at answering the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, which is what you'll see on all the materials in the community, that 1-800-273-TALK number. So that's not answered by a national call center. That's answered by people like us in your own community. 
and it's not um, a network that's necessarily funded as a network. It's a network that was meant to be a safety support network. Um, Crisis Link. Uh, PRS Crisis Link has its own local hotline, so it's a natural relationship that we would answer the, the Suicide Prevention Lifeline because we're already answering crisis calls. So it's try to make sure that when anyone is in crisis, there's one number they can call um, and the local community funds it. So Fairfax County, Arlington County, um, donations, grants, those kinds of things support our crisis center, not necessarily some national um, federal funded contract that we're receiving. So it's really important times like this when uh, stress levels seem to be increasing and our volume increases that our community understand how we are able to respond to the calls and where they go and who's answering them. Would you agree with yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it's, um, it's not just the, uh, um, you know, as she said, that the Lifeline is a network of communities answering for their own community. Um, so you guys are kind of both the people that are answering and the people that are calling, and also the people that are funding us. So it's really important that we get support from you guys um, in every way possible. Uh, so we're glad that we're doing this. So another question that we always get is, what does it take to volunteer and who answers the phone? So that's a tough question because there is no exact one type of person. Um, but we like to dispel the, the myth that it's only social workers or psychologists or mental health professionals here. Um, most of our folks do other things. Uh, they are working in the government, they work in banks, they are stay-at-home moms, they're teachers, they're doing lots of other things. And they're drawn to this because it's not you know, a one-time deal. It's something where they can learn skills and they can grow as a person, they can grow as a professional. Um, and it's ongoing and it's meaningful, it kind of fits into their schedule. So. I don't know, I can't say that there's one type of person. There's certainly qualities that people have in common, you know, empathy, uh, respect, patience. Um, they're usually people who it naturally in life are found to be good listeners. Um, what do you think, what's your perspective? Yeah, I think, you know, we kind of need all different kinds of people to answer the line. Um, the different skill, it's, it's very hard work. Uh, it requires a lot of different kinds of skill sets, things that we take a long time to teach everybody. Um, and you know, some people are really good at being patient and listening and being available, and other people are really good at asking the right questions and diving in and hearing more. So we need people with both and all skill sets to kind of be able to do this. So it's important that you know we get all kinds of different people to apply and, and, and volunteer with us. Absolutely. Um, so what does it take to be a volunteer? It's it's more complicated than just signing up. Um, but we do that for a reason, because just as we um, want to care for our clients and our callers and our texters, we also want to make um, considerable effort to make sure it's a good fit for the person that's going to be donating all of their time. We want to make sure that it's a good experience. We want to make sure that they're going to be satisfied doing this work. So we start off with you completing an online application on our website at prsinc.org. And then we contact you, schedule a phone interview generally, um, and then we have you come into an information session. And the information sessions are newer. That's something we're trying out this fall and those are also published on our website. We want you to come in and see the center. We want you to interact with us and other volunteers so that you are sure it's what you want to do and how you want to donate your time and resources. Um, through that we do kind of a group interview and then if it's a good fit, you'll be invited to our training class. And our training classes um, are despite the subject matter, actually a lot of fun. We start okay. off with a workshop for a two days, which is the ASSIST workshop. It's Applied Suicide Intervention Skills Training, and it's an evidence-based certification training, and everyone gets that. And the reason we put that up front is a lot of people come into training and they're not so sure about the content around suicide. They're not sure that's a good fit for them, and we wanna make sure they have that confidence when they move into our hotline or text line training program after that. So. Um, we offer that training and some people decide that it might not be for them and that's okay. Our goal is to give that training so that no matter what happens, you are ready to respond to suicide in the community. So it's um, a really important value um, to our community that no matter what your participation is at Crisis Link that you get that training. Once you go into training, um, you do classroom and online sessions, and then you move into the on-the-job, which Mike is is one of our on-the-job trainers. Can you tell us what's up? Yeah, what that's so like? it's basically a lot like a normal shift. Um, it's, again, three hours as a normal commitment. 
um, but you're with a specific trainer. So you're with me or with our other trainers, and uh, we listen to your calls and we support you through that, um, and we give you direct feedback every time. Uh, so you get really in-depth supported training, so you feel more confident. So by the time you are on the line, you've had uh, applied suicide intervention skills training, you've had our in-person hotline, um, you know, training, you've had online training, and you've had in-person training actually on certain calls. So by the time you're actually taking calls and starting your commitment with us, it's uh, really a lot involved, but you're going to feel a lot stronger and more capable. So we, we make sure everyone who answers our line is, is very capable and very, you know, is, they're, we know that they're willing and we know that they have the strength to do so. Absolutely. And you know, here we are, because we're not a clinical program, we're not doing therapy, we're not um, diagnosing, you really can have any type of experience as long as you have the time, the dedication, the empathy, and the willingness to do the work. So we have plenty of people here who have their own lived experience, either themselves, they've struggled, they may have um, attempted suicide in the past. We also have people who have lost loved ones to suicide. So if you feel like you're in the place that you're able to do this kind of work and you want that meaningful connection to the cause, there's a place for you. And we have you know various positions of volunteering here, not just Crisis Link, but PRS as a whole. Um, we have our hotline, our text line, and our caring program. So those are all um, very different skill sets, but there's always a place for people here, and we want to encourage you. Um, if you're concerned that maybe because your experiences you wouldn't fit in here, you will, we promise. Um, so how can people help beyond this? Because this might not be for everybody, and we totally get that, because we're call center people. We know that not everyone enjoys it as much as we do. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it takes hard. a special person to do it. <laughs> um, we have this entire month awesome activities for you to get involved in on various levels. Um, we have our Call Text Live campaign, which can be found on our website at prsinc.org slash calltextlive. You can find us on Twitter at PRS Incorporated or at Crisis Link. If you're watching this, you're on Facebook and we're here. Hi. Hi, thanks um, for joining us. <laughs> and we have a calendar, which is pretty awesome, and it gives you something that you can do every single day, from just reading something to learn a new perspective about suicide to um, tangible ways you can fund different things happening, um, social media activities. You can buy a t-shirt because these are fabulous t-shirts and you awesome should definitely get one. They're comfortable um, too, right? They're actually really soft. Yeah, they're and great. I'm not just saying that. We really <laughs> like them. Yeah. These are the best t-shirts you've ever had. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a $20 or $22 with shipping. Um, so it's mm -hmm. pretty awesome, affordable. And on the back of it, it has phone numbers. So you're like a walking source of hope and connection yeah. because people then know where to get help if they need that. Yeah. Um, we have a couple other things we encourage you to check out. We have walks. We're um, working with AFSP, uh, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention in both Loudoun and Fairfax. We also are um, doing the NAMI walk. Um, what else do you have, Mike? Come on. Uh, it's so many days. It's, it's, it's so it, many days. It's literally every, once, something every <laughs> single day, uh, <laughs> so it's hard to keep it track. I, I check my own calendar every day. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's really wonderful. Please do be a part of it. We, we um, you know, we like being a part of it because it means a lot to us, but we know that this means a lot to you guys too. And we want you to be a part of uh, Call Text Live. You know, uh, we really know that it's important and uh, we know you think it's important. So this is your way to actually show it. Uh, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, oh yeah, Instagram. We're on Instagram, Instagram too. We're at PRS Crisis Link. It's yep. our favorite. We've got lots of fun stuff there. So. Um, and, our, and our website, uh, so you can find all of that on our website at prsinc.org. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's on the main page, you can find it. <laughs> it's on a slider, uh, Yeah. because we just really threw cool. a lot of information. And also the person behind the camera, which you can't see, um, is going to be posting all of those links um, on this video as well. So if you're catching this at another time, feel free <laughs> to uh, click those links and not try to memorize everything we just threw at you. Yeah. Um, even though we're about to end this Facebook Live, it doesn't end here. Feel free to continue the conversation in the comments. Feel free to reach out to us. We want to have conversations about this. It's so important. Absolutely. Suicide does not discriminate, um, and we want to make sure that anyone out there who's concerned about somebody else or concerned about themselves has a safe place to reach out. And we're hopeful that giving a face to what we do and showing you what it's like here will make it even more welcoming for you to feel like it's a place for you too. So we appreciate your time tonight. We know it's super busy and we look forward to maybe doing this again in the future. So we hope you guys have a wonderful and safe night and we'll see you again sometime soon. Thanks. Bye.